Good afternoon, students. Are you ready to learn an eighth grade skill? I hope you are, because that is what we're talking about today. Some of you may know it. Some of you may be like, what? But today we're going to talk about Pythagorean's theorem, or I like to nickname him Pythag because it's shorter to say. Um, so Pythagorean's theorem is this unique rule or property that happens when we are talking about right triangles. So in a right triangle, obviously a right triangle is classified because it has a right angle, a 90 degree angle. However, there are different parts of a right triangle when we're talking about the sides. So we call the two sides that are perpendicular or on either side of the actual 90 degree angle, we call those the legs. The legs of the triangle, just like how you and I have two legs um, unless you're a different kind of species, which in which case you might have three, four, five, six legs, who knows? Um, but you know, the human species, we have two legs. A right triangle also has two legs. Um, we call the side across from the right angle, um, which is known, it's also known as the longest side of the triangle. Uh, we call this, it has a special name. It's called the hypotenuse. So this is how you spell it. Hi. Pot and oose. H Y P O T E N U S E. Sorry if that is not super legible. Um, and here is what the theorem says: Pythagorean's theorem. And it's Pythagorean. It was this dude from back in the day who discovered this. And you know, when you discover cool things in math and science and stuff, typically you get it named after you. So that's why it's called Pythagorean's theorem. Is because Pythagorean is the guy who found it out. So it's named after him. Here's what it says. It says the sum of the legs squared. So if we were to take these leg measurements and add them and then square them is equivalent to the same as the hypotenuse squared. If we were to take the hypotenuse measurement and square it. So in a formula, it looks like this. It may be a formula you've heard of or have you seen. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. <clears throat> I personally... While this is a good formula, like shout out to Pythagorean for coming up with this theorem and this formula, I personally like to use the formula L squared plus L squared equals H squared because A, B, and C are all talking about if we were to like label the legs A and B and then the hypotenuse C, which is fine, but I'm like, it doesn't really matter which is A and which is B, right? They're both the two legs of the triangle. And because we're just adding them, right, we could add, this formula could be B squared plus A squared equals C squared. Like it doesn't really matter the order. Um, so I kind of like to use the actual letters of what the sides represent, the legs versus the hypotenuse. But on formula sheets and kind of in popular culture, like this is the formula that it's known as. So Either one of these works, but basically this is taking this statement that I have in words up at the top and putting it into a formula format. So sometimes you need to, you'll, sometimes the question is going to ask you to find one of the legs of the triangle. Sometimes it's going to ask you to find the hypotenuse. So it just depends. So we're going to do a couple of examples at each. So that way you can see. So let's say I have a right triangle. And right triangles can be drawn anyway, right? Like I could have flipped this, put it, you know, as long as it has a right angle, that's what makes it a right triangle. And let's say that this triangle has the sides three and four are the legs and the hypotenuse is five. If I wanted to see if these could be three potential sides of a triangle, first I need to check that um, theorem from before that if I add up any two sides, it has to be greater than the third side. But because it's a right triangle, I also need to check Pythagorean's theorem. So I need to check, does three squared plus four squared equal to, is that equal to the same thing as five squared? So I'm just going to use what I know about exponents to solve. So three squared is nine, three times three. Four squared is four times four, which is 16. And five squared is five times five, which is 25. So I need to check, does nine plus 16 equal 25? And it does. So yay. These could be three potential sides of a right triangle. So sometimes they'll give you like three sides and be like, could these be three right sides of a triangle? And you have to plug them into Pythagorean's theorem to figure it out. Now let's use it where 
one of the sides of the triangle is missing. So let's say I had the triangle. I'm going to draw it this way this time. Let's say I had a right triangle and I knew that the hypotenuse was 15 and I knew that this leg was nine, but I don't know what this leg is. So I'm just going to say X. So I can figure out what the length of this side of the triangle is going to be just by using Pythagorean's theorem. Now, again, it only works with right triangles. So if there wasn't a right angle here, I couldn't use this formula. So if I use my formula, L squared plus L squared equals H squared, or A squared plus B squared plus C squared, whichever the case, I'm going to plug in what I have. So I know that I don't have, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have this side, so I can just keep that as L squared. I'll replace it with X in a moment. I do know that one of them is nine, so I can replace it with nine, that L, so nine squared is equivalent to the hypotenuse squared, which would be 15 squared. So if I replace this with X, I have this particular equation. X squared plus nine squared should be equivalent to 15 squared. So to figure out what X, the length of this side of the triangle should be, I'm just gonna solve this equation like how I've solved so many other equations um, by using my good old pose. But I'm gonna replace my exponents with their standard form. So nine squared is nine times nine, which is 81. 15 squared is 15 times 15, which is 225. And then if I use my properties of equality to solve, I'm going to get rid of 81 because I'm trying to figure out what X is. So I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides of my equation using the ESPO property. I'm not going to make you label it here, but remember that's the property. Um, and then I have X squared is equivalent to uh, 225 minus 81 is 144. So I have X squared equals 144. Now, in previous fashions, we've just been using MPO, DPO, SPO to solve for X. Um, but X squared is X times X. And we're taking something squared. So the way that we undo something squared is we do what's called, we take this, we do what's called taking the square root. So if I was to take the square root, <clears throat> of x squared, that's going to leave me with just x, right? Because x squared is just x times x. So if I take the square root, that's going to tell me what x is. But remember, with an equation, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I'm going to take the square root of x squared to simplify for x, I have to take the square root of the other side. So basically, x is going to be equivalent to whatever the square root of 144 is. <clears throat> and remember, when something is squared, that means it's something times itself. So for example, two squared is two times two. Nine squared was nine times nine. So the square root is like kind of going back or backwards, figuring out what times itself is going to make whatever the number is that's inside of our square root. So we have to figure out what number times itself makes 144. Is it like 10 times 10, five times five? Um, sometimes they're not perfect whole numbers. Sometimes it might be a decimal. Um, in that case, if you can't find a perfect whole number where it works, um, a lot of times what you can do is you can leave your answer as a square root. So in this case, 12 times 12 makes 144. So that means the square root of 144 is going to be 12, which means that X, the length of this side of the triangle is going to be 12 whatever units we're talking about. Um, but let's say, for instance, there wasn't a perfect number. Like, let's say this was the square root of 140. There's not a perfect whole number that we can multiply together times itself to make 140. So you can leave your answer as a square root. And we're going to talk um, later in the year about how you can even like simplify square roots, kind of like you simplify fractions. There's even a way you can simplify square roots, but you can leave your answer as a square root if it's not a perfect whole number. I believe one of your practice questions, the answer ends up just being a square root. Um, but in this case, we had a perfect square. So the answer is 12. Here are your practice questions, as for mentioned. There are just two. Um, so here are the two I would like for you to solve. So you have a right triangle that has a leg of X, a leg of seven, and a hypotenuse of nine. And then you have another right triangle with legs of 16 and 12, and you need to actually solve for the hypotenuse, which is, um, I just labeled it X. 
I believe when one of these, uh, your final answer is going to, you can leave it as a square root because there is not a perfect square. Um, if you're not sure how you would write that, you can check the answers in the table of contents for how you would just write, you know, X equals square root of whatever. Um, and you can check the table of contents to see how that's formatted. Um, but I hope you enjoyed learning about Pythagorean's theorem or good old Pythag's theorem. Um, if you have any questions, check the table of contents for your practice question answers. Always ask your teacher if you need any support. And I hope you'll have a great day. Bye.